It is book review time again today. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to be reviewing Robin Hobbs' The Tawny Man Trilogy. Hi everyone, it is Samantha and I am very excited about today's video because I get to review The Tawny Man Trilogy by Robin Hobb, one of my favorite series of hers so far and I can't wait to review it for you guys. So I'm going to have two videos up, one is going to be spoiler free and one is going to be a review and a discussion and that one will have spoilers but they're going to be split into two separate videos but the first half will be the same where I tell you the plot and kind of review it. The discussion bit will be the added bit. To that video so just make sure you're clicking on the right one in case you don't want to be spoiled because you haven't read it yet but rest assured that the beginning of both of those videos is the same so there is that so I thought I'll kind of start out the video with kind of a discussion on Robin Hobb's books and where to start because I get asked that question all the time so I will now tell you guys so you want to start from the beginning with Robin Hobb's books I think that you gain a lot by doing so particularly with the way the stories will intersect even with the live ship books with the Farseer books so I recommend starting with the Farseer books the first book is Assassin's Apprentice which I'm currently lending out so I can't show you the second book is The Royal Assassin, and then book three is Assassin's Quest. You can then move on to the live ship books, which includes The Ship of Magic, book one. Book two is The Mad Ship, which I'm also lending out, and then book three is The Ship of Destiny. And from there, you can move on to the Tawny Man books, which I'll be reviewing here today. The first book is Fool's Errand, book two is The Golden Fool, and then book three is Fool's Fate. And then from there, you move on to the Rainwilds books, which I'll be starting next month, and then after that is The Fits in the Fool trilogy where the second book has just been published. That's kind of where you need to start. I think that you gain a lot by starting at the beginning, particularly with the way that stories intersect and weave together and it all kind of culminates in the Tawny Man trilogy. I cannot sing her praises enough. I know you guys hear me talk about her all the time, but I don't praise authors lightly and these are seriously some of the best books I have ever read, some of the best fantasy, and I think that they really appeal to people who A, are new to fantasy and don't know where to start, and B, people who don't typically read fantasy, I think would really enjoy these as well. Just because the themes that she deals with are very universal, they can be very character driven. Though there are events that happen in the world that kind of drive the plot, a lot of it is very much character focused, and the way that she does that is very beautifully done. And so I think that even if you don't typically read fantasy as a genre, that you will still enjoy these books a lot. So that's kind Kind of my overview of Robin Hobbs books and where to start and why I think that people would enjoy them. So now I'll actually get into the actual review of the Tawny Man Trilogy. The Tawny Man Trilogy takes place about 15 years after the end of Assassin's Quest and a few years after the Ship of Destiny. The story starts with Fool's Errand, which is book one, and we are again back with Fitz. The story is again told from Fitz's perspective. It opens with Fitz, who is now 35, and we learn that he has been living on his own with his wolf Night Eyes and his foster son Hap, whom he took in about the age of seven. And together they've been kind of living alone in this cottage kind of far away from Buckcape Castle and all their politics. And Fitz is still kind of living in hiding basically since a lot of people think that he is still dead so he's just kind of been living in seclusion that he will receive occasional visits from the minstrel Starling. However soon in the beginning Fitz is soon unwillingly, unwillingly thrust back into Buckkeep politics when he receives an urgent missive from his old mentor Shade requesting his immediate presence and help back at Buckkeep Castle. Shade and Queen Kittrigan need Fitz's help in order to secure and rescue the young Prince Dutiful who has been kidnapped by the witted group called the Piebalds. This is a very militant group in the old blood or witted community, of which Fitz is one, he has the wit, who is kind of trying to seek revenge upon all the past wrongs that have been put upon them, all the murders and things that have happened for people who have the wit. So they have kidnapped Prince Dutiful in order to fulfill their objective, and the Queen and Shade need Fitz's help in order to get the Prince Dutiful back. So Fitz returns and ends up taking on the persona of Tom Badgerlock, who is a man servant to Lord Golden. Lord Golden is the fool himself, who has also recently returned to Buckkeep after his many adventures. Fitz is again thrust back into the court intrigues and politics of the six duchies, as him and the as Fitz and the fool end up setting out to rescue Prince Dutiful before his patrol ceremony to the Narcheska, who is one of the daughters of the clan leaders of the Out Islanders, who are the people that the Six Touches were warring in the first series. Fitz and the Fool soon find out that there is a lot more at stake than they first sought, beyond the missing prince and his betrothal to the Out Islander bride, as all of the Fool's prophecies begin to culminate in one epic finale. Overall, I found this to be one of Robin Hobb's best series yet. The character growth, plot development, and world building were impeccably and beautifully done. The fair character of Fitz himself is a far cry from the young lad that we left off with in Assassin's Quest. He has shown 
a true growth and maturity that he did not display in the first series and I absolutely loved it the way that she has realistically grown his character was really wonderful to see he's finally able to think for himself and make his own decisions not based upon what everybody else wants him to do the fool is another character that we really get to see more of in the series we get to learn more about him and his past and she explores fits into the fool's relationship in such a way that is so beautiful it's seriously one of the most beautiful relationships and friendships between two people that I have ever encountered in literature before as I've come to expect from Hobbes work the characters are fleshed out and complex the plot feels very realistic and real and you just feel super invested in the story the writing itself is fantastic Robin Hobb really has a big grasp of the English language she's able to vividly bring to life the world that this takes place in and invoke really strong emotions in the reader the way that she has woven the story from the first book of Assassin's Apprentice to the last book in this trilogy Fool's Fate was one of the most amazing things I have ever witnessed or I've ever read it was just so well done the way that she wove everything together into that last book it was so so good overall the series was excellent if you have read the first series the first trilogy the farseer books if you weren't so sure if you want to continue on a lot of people found the third book assassin's quest to be a bit of a struggle i personally really enjoyed it but rest assured her books get a lot better you can definitely see her writing mature as the books go along and it is never more apparent than it was in this series so i really 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 enjoyed this book series so much the first book pool's errand i ended up rating four out of five stars it was an introductory book so not a whole lot happened but trust me the story ends up picking up in the other two I ended up giving book two, The Golden Fool, a 5 out of 5 stars, and the last book, Fool's Fate, I rated it a 10 out of 10 stars. Yes, I'm giving this more than 5 because it deserves it. It is the best book I have read this year. One of the best books I have ever read is definitely on the top of my list, up with Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, which is saying something, so it's mean a lot to me. All I have to say is that... It is worth reading all of Robin Hobb's books just to get to this one book. It was that amazing. I have never cried so much during a book. I cried so many times while reading this. It really, really got to me. There were happy tears. There were sad tears. There was just a lot of tears. A lot of tears. So it really affected me emotionally, which is really hard to do. That doesn't happen to me very often. So the fact that she was able to invoke that strong of a reaction says something about her writing. And the ending itself was amazing. I don't even know where, how, where she's going to go with the story. Because I know there's another trilogy called The Fits and the Fool trilogy where we're back with them and I can't even imagine what's going to happen. I mean, it was that well done. It was so good. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. That is high praise for me. Okay, so that was it for my review of... Okay, so that was it for... That was it... Okay, so that was it for my review of the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb. Now I'll get into the discussion-y bits, which I'm very excited about. So this will be very filled with spoilers. So if you have already read it, then you are safe to watch. If you haven't, then I suggest you stop watching right now. Right now. I have warned you. You have been warned. So I don't even know where to start right now in my discussion. I guess I'll start with the Fitz and the Fool's relationship. That was seriously one of the most beautiful relationships I have ever read. The way that she wrote it in this Fool's Fate in particular was just, oh my god. I couldn't handle it. I felt so bad in book two when they ended up having the fight when the fool was trying to tell Fitz just how much he loved him and Fitz took it to mean something different than what the fool meant. That broke my heart when they were fighting and the fool was kind of closing Fitz off and treating him like he was Lord Golden and he was Tom Badgerlock and that was breaking my heart. I was like Fitz just apologized. So I was so happy at the end of book two when they talked and they kind of had it out a little bit and Fitz kind of explained himself more. I thought that was very beautifully done. And then I was like, when he was trying to block the fool from leaving for the Out Islanders, Out Islands, I was like, Fitz, stop, you're going to break his heart. It was just so hard. And then when he shows up on the island, I was so excited. And all of the conversations they had in book three were so heartbreaking. And there's the love that they have for one another. And that moment when Fitz goes into the pale woman's stronghold and he sees the fool's broken body and he is dead it broke my heart i started crying and i don't cry very often and i was so sad and it was told from Fitz's perspective so you're hearing it from his perspective and what he's thinking and feeling and it breaks your heart and then at the end of that chapter when he brings him to the skill pillar and he's like no i am the catalyst i'm going to be the changer i'm going to take his fate i was like oh my god i'm going to cry and then he ends up saving him with a crown and Oh, it was so well done. And then again, my heart broke when him and the fool parted ways. And I started crying at the end of the book when Fitz had been in the skill pillar for a month and he finds out that the fool had visited him and he left him this poem. And it was in the italicized portion at the beginning of the chapter. And I knew it was from the fool And before I even read the chapter and I started crying because it was so touching what he wrote. And I couldn't even handle it. So I don't even know how there she's going to handle it with Fitz and the fool in the next trilogy the way that she ended this one. I'm assuming that the fool is going to learn something or have another prophecy and have to return back to Fitz. And I can't wait to see that because they need to be together. 
So just a relationship is just so beautiful and I love it to bits. It's just well done, Robin Hobb, bravo. I'll start the slow clap for Robin Hobb. So some of the other really touchy moments and sad moments that got me in the book, well, first one was Night Eye's death. I had a feeling it was going to come. I mean, a wolf can only live so long, but it still broke my heart and I missed Night Eye's for the rest of the books because I really liked having that bond between Fitz and his wolf and just their relationship together. And having Night Eye's counsel really added a lot to the story. So I cried when he, when he died. It made me so sad. I was like, no, Night Eyes, don't go. And part of me kind of hopes that he will bond with another animal, but I don't think he will. So that will be interesting to see if that happens in the third trilogy with Fitz and the Fool. <sighs> but I miss Night Eyes. This other death that really upset me was Burrich, and I wasn't expecting him to die that way. I thought that they would have more time to talk. But the moment when he showed up on the island, no, the moment when he Nettle let him know that Fitz was alive, that made me tear up too, because he realized what happened. That for 15 years, he had kind of betrayed Fitz by taking Molly, and they all thought he was dead. And I think that he reacted that way because he never even thought, or he never even tried to look to see if that was actually Fitz. Like, he just gave up at that moment. And I think that's what bothered Fitz the most, was that he had just given up. And personally, more than anything, I think that was the betrayal that bothered Fitz. It wasn't so much that Burge ended up taking Molly for his own. I think it was the fact that he didn't even try to find Fitz and see if he was truly dead. So that scene between them when he arrived on the island and he was there to bring Fitz home and his son home was so touching. And then when he died, it was so sudden and I was so sad. <sighs> I mean, I kind of understand why she did it. I needed it to happen, but it still broke my heart. Particularly since I really liked Birch as a character. He was kind of that good salt of the earth character, and I really, really enjoyed it and how much he cared for Fitz, which you really get to see just how much he cared for Fitz in this book. And just all the feels, all the feels were felt with these books. The next thing I thought was really interesting with the series that she handled was the Witted community, with the Piebalds being kind of like this militant group of Witted, kind of turning it not only against the crown, but also against other Witted people. I thought that was really an interesting twist, and I really liked how it ended up culminating with the old blood kind of dealing with the situation themselves. I think it's sad. It was basically a civil war within the community, but I'm hoping that with now with Ketrick and kind of saying, no, we need to like help the witted, that it will end up becoming a good thing again, the wit, the wit becoming a good thing. But that whole situation was sad, but I really liked that she kind of delved into that topic, this book, and how it was dealt with. And I also found it funny that the piebalds all hated Fitz, and like none of them realized that Fitz was the witted bastard that they kept using as their icon. So I'm like, you bunch of idiots. So, but the end of book two, when they ended up almost basically killing Fitz, that was another sad scene where they all brought him back. And that moment when Dutiful realizes who Fitz is was like, yes! I basically loved it whenever anybody found out that Tom Badgerlock was Fitz. That, those moments were some of my favorites because they're all like, oh, crap. <laughs> I don't know, just... Were some moments that I was like, you get all squealy and happy inside. Molly and Fitz, that is another topic. I really like how their story ended up falling into place. I like how Fitz went about courting her again and courting her children and earning her love back. And I'm so, I'm so happy that they ended up together again. It made me so happy. And that Fitz ended up caring for Burrich's boys like Burrich cared for Fitz. That, that melted my little heart. So I'm really glad that they ended up together and they kind of have a happy ending so far, I'm sure. Nothing with Fitz can ever end happy. Who knows what's going to happen in the Fitz and the Fool trilogy. The other thing I thought was great in this book was, of course, Nettle and Dutiful. Both of Fitz's children. Of course, Dutiful doesn't know that. And you probably won't ever know. I'm really glad Nettle found out who her father is, and I like the relationship together. Um, she's very strong-willed. She has a lot of Fitz in her. Fitz and Molly, both of their strong willness, willfulness she has inside of her. So I'm glad that she ended up finding out that Fitz was her father as well, and that she's strong in the skill. And I like how Dutiful's strong in the skill and the wit. Like, just how they handle that. And I feel bad for Fitz, because, like, all of his own children he was never able to raise. He's never had his own child to raise himself from infancy on, which is dealt with in the book. It's, I think, who was it? Was it the Pale Woman that kind of mentioned that to him? Kind of played on his fears and his desires, and that was one of them. The Pale Woman was another interesting character, so we find out that she is one of the White Prophets, and that so as the Fool is, but we find out she's actually the False Prophet, whereas the Fool is not. And I really like how that was dealt with, and I felt so bad for the Fool and his fear for her, and what she does to people was awful. So her death, I felt so happy when I found out she 
she died. And then we find out the black man on the island is another white prophet, and that was interesting. So we find out why their skin changes colors, so why the fool went from white to being now brown skinned, I think they said at the end of the book, is because every single time they make a change in the world, they go through a change where their skin changes color. I thought that was a really interesting idea, and I'm glad that the fool will kind of go back home and hopefully be able to put back some rights. But I'm kind of wondering, some of my theories for the next book is that he's either going to have some new prophecies or he's going to uncover some prophecies while he's there that affect Fitz. Because I think Fitz is like the ultimate catalyst that has ever lived. I think he is the one that will help set the world to rights forever because that is the prophet's ultimate goal. And I think Fitz is the one. So I'm thinking that something's going to happen and he's going to uncover something where he's going to have to go back to Fitz and be like, hey man, we're not done. So uh, <laughs> I need your help. And of course, this book, we have a lot of dragons. We have Tintaglia again from the Life Ship books, which I thought was really, really great. And then Icefire, who's going to be her mate. I really like that they, she, they uncovered like this other dragon that was living and his story was really sad as well. So I liked how that all ended up playing out and basically how Tintaglia and Icefire went at it basically throughout the rest of the book. They were just like going at it like rabbits. <laughs> so I'm sure that's going to play into the Rain Wilds Chronicles books. But the last thing I want to talk about is the skill pillars. So when Fitz was coming back to Buckkeep Castle, he got stuck in that skill pillar for a month and he encountered a presence the same one he encountered in the first book. But he described it in this one as being full of love, full of immense power and knowledge. And at first I was thinking it was the dragons, but then I'm like, no, that can't be Tintaglia because I don't think Tintaglia would be full of love and knowledge for humans because you're so arrogant. And I think this is some other being that is not a dragon. And I'm wondering if we're going to explore that in the Fits and the Fool trilogy, if that's going to be brought up. Because Robin Hobb, she'll drop something somewhere and it'll end up becoming a big piece later in the series or in later books. So this seemed like just kind of dropped out of nowhere, but I have a feeling it's going to play a very important part in the world to come. So I'm very excited about that and see what that's all about. So as now I'm starting to lose my voice, I think I'm going to end this video because I've been talking for so much, but I hope you guys enjoyed this review and the discussion. I would love to talk with you guys about this book series, particularly the third book, Fool's Fate. Just let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are if you have read it, which I hope you have. Otherwise, you have been majorly spoiled. But yes. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, happy reading. Bye.